actually think that there's a ton of opportunity right now. I think that we are pretty close to the end of this pretty difficult stretch that, that we've had over the past year and a half, two years. Everything that I see related to uh, mortgage rates and uh, homes available for sale and home prices leads me to believe that 2025 is going to be a pretty good year. Welcome back to Nevada Realtors Today, your place for timely updates on the news and trends that matter to realtors in the Silver State. And now let's join your Nevada Realtors President, Brandon Roberts, and Nevada Realtors CEO, Tiffany Banks, for today's episode of Nevada Realtors Today. Okay, we are so lucky um, to be joined today by Diego Sanchez, who's a digital media veteran with over a decade in executive management. And he's had senior leadership roles at Travel Zoo and now is a president of Housing Wire, a leading source of news and analysts for the housing and mortgage markets. So before we go into learning a little bit more about Housing Wire and what Housing Wire does, we'd love to hear a little bit more about you. Yeah, happy to share that with you. And thank you so much for inviting me onto your show. I was really honored to to get the invitation. So I've been in the media business for a while, but a couple decades at this point. But the focus that I had before Housing Wire was business to consumer media. So I was at um, a travel publisher. I was at a healthy lifestyle publisher that published titles that you may know, like Men's Health and Women's Health. Runner's World and uh, Prevention, then took the leap uh, into business media and uh, wasn't too sure uh, if it would be as interesting as, you know, uh, B2C media. But it turns out uh, that at least in housing, <laughs> the last six years have been interesting all the time. In fact, maybe too interesting at, at some times, right? Is there um, anything going on right now in right. housing? So um, there has been a lot going on and uh, housing is is fascinating from a news perspective because uh, it's been an industry that has been almost constantly under disruption um, for a long time now. There's always new players, interesting new players coming onto the scene uh, to provide competition to, to the legacy players. And there are really interesting companies there are very interesting personalities, very interesting personalities, right? On both the real estate and the mortgage side. So there's just always something great to cover from a news perspective. And the angle that I really like is there's so much great data um, and it can be pretty confusing data at times. And so our ability, uh, and this is an ability that we've really been working on over the last couple of years our ability to unpack that data and analyze it and come up with some perspectives for our audience, um, I think has been really huge. And I think has been a big part of our growth over the past couple of years, especially as we pushed from, you know, where our legacy strength was in housing finance and mortgage uh, into real estate over the last two or three years. And so for, for our listeners who would be, you know, some of our agents, why is that information important for them? Like, why is it important to be in the know on what the data says and shows? Yeah, I mean, from my perspective, there are really two key data points in the housing market. Uh, and it's important to really understand what moves the needle with those two data points uh, in order to do your job and grow your business, Right. Uh, because, you know, what happens with those two data points is what happens in your business. We spent a lot of time thinking about uh, mortgage rates and uh, the interrelation of mortgage rates with interest rates and the economy. And uh, so mortgage rates are hugely important. And we actually have a partnership uh, with a company called Poly that allows us to present real-time mortgage rates on our site. Uh, and these are rates that are actually getting locked by home buyers across the country. Um, and so if you go to housingwire.com and you click on the mortgage rates category page, we're updating those mortgage rates every hour during market hours. Um, and I think that's really important, especially in times like the last couple of weeks, where you can see movements in mortgage rates of tens of basis points. Hmm. 
intraday, right? Um, and so when you think about like, what does that mean for my, my sellers and my buyers in my sphere, um, it has a big impact on what's going to happen over the next couple of weeks if mortgage rates move that much. So that's one data point. Uh, the other data point that is, uh, I think, really important is inventory. What's available for sale? Um, we had um, we had a couple of years where there was barely anything available for sale. Um, and, you know, those were a good couple of years, but the market got pretty unhealthy uh, during that time uh, where there was almost no supply. Uh, supply has gotten a little bit more healthy over the last couple of years. And the reason supply is so important is because of, you know, basic supply and demand, right? If there's nothing to s nothing for sale, there's nothing that people can buy. Um, and if there's really heavy demand and, and low supply, prices are going to shoot up like we saw them do during the pandemic. Um, so I, I really pay a lot of attention to those two, two key data points. Um, and we have uh, in kind of an insider advantage with homes available for sale as well, because we bought a company called Altos Research about a year and a half ago, which provides uh, kind of real-time housing market data uh, in every zip code across the country. Wow, that's awesome. Hey, Diego, uh, thanks for joining us today. I really appreciate your time. Um, can you share maybe some of the most significant trends you're uh, currently observing in the housing and mortgage market? Absolutely. So we like, when I say we, um, we have a couple of housing market analysts that I think folks in this audience might want to get to know if they haven't gotten to know them already. But, um, one is Logan Motoshami. So he's been uh, our lead analyst for a couple of years now and called a lot of the big movements in the housing market over the past four years pretty much spot on. Um, so he's he's got a really good model for what what's what's going to happen in the housing market. He writes for us multiple times per week. He goes on our uh, our main podcast, Housing War Daily, uh, a couple times a week. Um, and so I pay really close attention to what he's thinking about and what he's publishing and the data that he's analyzing. Um, and you know he's he pays a lot of attention to. Um, to what's happening in the labor market um, and how that interrelates with what's going to happen with interest rates and eventually mortgage rates. Um, and so one thing that we've been seeing over the past couple of months is the economy does seem to be, it's either um, it's either going into a soft landing um, or uh, hopefully not, you know, a, a harder landing. Um, but either, either of those options likely means, you know, the loss of some jobs and uh, uh, the Federal Reserve making a move to uh, to moderate in terms of their interest rates, which will be beneficial in terms of lowering mortgage rates. So that's that's one of the things that we're keeping a really close eye on. What's happening with those those job reports, um, and how's that going to impact the broader economy, and how's that going to impact what the Federal Reserve decides to do next? Um, and then you know. Pay, paying a lot, always pay a lot of attention to homes available for sale and home prices. Um, and so our other uh, major analyst is uh, this guy, Mike Simonson, who uh, founded the Altos research business that we acquired a year and a half ago. And he actually puts out a weekly video on YouTube uh, under the Altos research brand, where he breaks down exactly what's happening over the past week in terms of all these great data points like inventory of homes available for sale, home prices, the percentage of homes that are seeing price decreases while they're listed. Uh, so really interesting insights into what's happening week over week in the housing market. Um, and so what we've seen with inventory is that um, we're kind of finally starting to get back to a more healthy supply situation, right? Like there, for years, there just haven't been, been enough homes available for sale. But especially in some states, like Texas, like Arizona, like Florida, we're seeing inventory return to 2019 levels, which we view as a much more balanced and healthy housing market. 
Yeah, and I think being able to package what it sounds like the data, because I think when when you go to read this information, it's so overwhelming and you don't know how to make sense of it, but you're able to watch something. And it sounds like if these guys are available through, you know, YouTube or these podcasts every week and you can actually be in the know, you can be able to make informed decisions on is this the right time for me or should I wait or what is the, I mean, I love, obviously nobody has like a, you know, what is the future thing? The ball? The ball. Yes. The ball. Nobody has the crystal ball. But I think that understanding like these data points and the analytics around it does help with making informed decisions. I, I completely agree. And um, both Logan and Mike are really good at uh, taking confusing and overwhelming data and breaking it down into more simple terms that you know all of us can understand, right? And I think that's really helpful for um, for real estate professionals. And in fact, um, you know, uh, it, we have a huge audience of real estate professionals that are following Mike Simonson's weekly YouTube videos. And I would guess that the biggest portion of the Housing Wire Daily audience is real estate professionals, even though again. You know, our legacy is ha at Housing Wire is on the mortgage side. Right. Um, Logan goes on Housing Wire Daily so much that he's just built up this huge real estate professional audience that appreciate his ability to kind of break down the data data into more simple terms. Uh, agents or realtors really need to know the the analytics, and and in the past they had to do a lot of research. But with you know, people people like yourselves and companies like yours uh, putting it out, it makes it a lot easier. All they got to do is tap in and listen. Um, so I thank you for, for putting all the information out. I know I gather a lot of, uh, my information by watching, uh, and reading your articles and, and I've be seeing you on some podcasts and stuff. So thanks for being out there in our industry. Um, let's see, I, let's go down to, um, technology. I mean, how is technology transforming the housing industry and how is housing wire adapting to, to these changes? We, we just had a, a, a one-day summit recently that was focused on artificial intelligence. And um, the reason that we uh, decided to put together that one-day summit focused on that topic is at uh, our big event earlier this year uh, called The Gathering, where we bring together executives from real estate and executives from mortgage into, into one room. Um, you know, there were only a couple of sessions in that uh, three-day agenda that were focused specifically on technology, but AI kept coming up over and over and over again. Um, and when we see a topic continue to come up like that organically, we want to dig in a little bit more. Um, and so we really dug in on the AI topic uh, related to both uh, real estate and mortgage at this one-day summit. And uh, I think my takeaway, my big takeaway from that, from that one day summit was it's coming and it's coming really fast. And, uh, uh, you know, progressive mortgage companies and progressive real estate companies are already trying really hard to figure out how to incorporate AI into their workflows in a way that will benefit the, the consumer. Um, and so, you know, we, we heard a lot of examples and this is on the mortgage side, but um, you think about big servicers that um, service, you know, hundreds of thousands and millions of mortgages across the country, and um, they have, probably have a big opportunity to, to refinance uh, some of those mortgages over the next couple of years as we come down from those really high mortgage rates to, to more reasonable mortgage rates. Um, and so they're, they're using a lot, they're using AI to do a lot of um, sentiment analysis when 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 reps are on phone calls with those homeowners um, to help make offers they're looking at um, you know thousands and hundreds of thousands of phone calls and documents to figure out what are the right offers to make to these folks um, to, to help them refinance when when rates start to move in a positive direction you look on the real estate side um, and there are tons of brokerages that are thinking about, okay, how can I um, deploy AI to magn magnify my ability to keep in touch with my sphere, right? So if so if I get an inbound um, and I'm not available at that moment, 
Um, maybe I have um, a chat bot that's, that's able to like um, answer a couple of questions and schedule some time for me to meet with that prospect uh, later in the day or later in the week. Um, um, AI can be very useful uh, and can digest a lot of data uh, and come up with structured ways of, of answering questions. Um, now you need to train it, right? Um, because um, with um, this and other uh, algor algorithmic models and um, machine learning, it, you know, if you're putting garbage in, you're going to get some garbage out. And that's particularly worrisome in housing because we have um, fair housing issues and fair lending issues that we've got to think about and, and regulatory issues and a very large settlement that that happened recently that is changing the way that we uh, conduct our business. Um, so you got to be careful with AI. But everyone is everyone that's that's thinking into into the future is thinking about AI. And well, we actually had Ashley Stinton on last week, the executive director of NAR's Reach, and you know it was really incredible hearing from her talking about how. Everything with this new technology is is aimed at making sure that the realtor is still the center of the transaction and similar, I'm sure, to the mortgage industry of making sure that that mortgage lender is still the center of the transaction. They're just given these tools to help amplify their business and make sure that whatever they're doing is far more streamlined and efficient so they're able to still have that personal touch. I love that you brought that up. Because I, I feel like that's um, something that we think about and talk a lot about at HousingWare. We're, we're really rooting for the industry. And our thesis is that it is um, the technology-enabled advisor professional that is going to win. Um, none, none of this technology can replace um, the fiduciary responsibility and the advisory capacity of, of the real estate agent and the loan originator. It's great for consumers to have an amazing real estate agent uh, and an amazing loan originator uh, as part of their process in a process that's like really scary and that you only do a couple times in your life, right? Um, so, uh, you know, I'm really glad that you bring that up. Um, but everyone that presented at this AI One, One Day Summit was talking about enabling um, the advisor, uh, the professional just to be better at their job uh, and to, to have bigger spheres, to answer questions more effectively, um, to analyze data more effectively. Um, so yeah, to totally agree that um, the, the advisor is still at the center of this transaction. And we do feel that, again, when you look at the articles that Housing Wire is putting out and the information, it is very centered. And we appreciate that on the industry succeeding. And that's what we always say. Like, we're in this together. Like, we're only as successful as one another. So if we're not rooting for each other and we're not helping each other, like, get to that point that we need to be, then what are we doing? And so I really appreciate you saying all that as well. Absolutely. And that was another big reason uh, that we decided to bring together uh, the event that was, we had an event focused on the mortgage executive called Housing More Annual uh, we had an event that was focused on the real estate executive called the Gathering of Eagles. We brought both of those events together because um, we truly believe that um, when real estate and mortgage work together effectively, that's a really powerful one-two punch for the home buyer or the home seller, right? Um, and so um, we're really focused on opportunities uh, to bring those two groups together so that they can network, they can learn together. And most importantly, they can solve some of the problems that we have in the housing market together. Yeah, I think, Brandon, I think you had mentioned that about actually having even a far better relationship with your loan originator than ever before. I'm actually, I think when we've talked in the past or what I've heard you say to your agents, it's like, you're gonna have to pick up the phone and have a lot of these conversations at the onset than maybe you ever had previously because of the settlement. Right, I think, um, you know, structuring deals now with, uh, with the settlement, um, I think you have to be in communication more with the lender so you make sure you're doing it uh, in a way that the, the, the loan can go through. Um, with that, I mean, with this settlement, how do you think it's affecting loan officers or the mortgage industry? I, I mean, we know how it's affecting the real estate side of it. 
but but are are you seeing any impacts on the 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 lender side? I think we will see some impact uh, on the on the lender side. I think that it, it, I think we have to wait and see a little bit what happens uh, to to the buyer's agent. Uh, I mean, there are some um, there are some forecasters who who see a pretty significant decline in the number of you know uh, buyer focused agents uh, over the next couple of years. We'll have to see if that actually comes to pass. Um, the 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 issue for um, the LO is they need to make sure that they're partnered and providing value um, to the agents that are going to win coming out of this settlement. Which, from my perspective, um, are the professionals? You know, the folks who, um, who who do who do it full time, who are, who are a trusted advisor uh, for their their buyers and sellers, um, and who understand the data. Uh, who understand where the market is moving, um, and so uh, you know, I think LOs that align themselves with those true professionals and those true advisors are going to win, uh, and I think the 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 ones that don't are are, are going to struggle because, you know, for most LOs, their realtor referral partnerships are a really really important part of their overall book of business. And um, so if you're partnered with the, the wrong uh, realtors or real estate agents, uh, you, you're probably going to struggle. Good morning. Diego, what do you think the biggest challenges are facing, um, facing the housing market today and how can professionals in the industry navigate these challenges? I actually think that there's a ton of opportunity right now. I think, I, I think that we are pretty close to the end of this pretty difficult stretch um, that, that we've had over the past year and a half, two years. Um, so I, you know, everything that I see related to, uh, mortgage rates and, uh, homes available for sale and home prices, um, leads me to believe that 2025 is going to be a pretty good year. Um, and so my fingers are crossed because like lots of stuff could still happen. We have a big election coming up. Um, and there's other things that could cause uncertainty, but if things continue to play out, like it seems like they're playing out where it does to me seem like the federal reserve has, uh, maneuvered us towards a, a softer landing, um, with, with the economy, uh, I, I see a lot of, uh, I feel, I feel a lot of optimism, uh, for, for 2025. Um, I think, uh, some of the areas where, um, uh, I see, you know, some obstacles or some potential pitfalls. Uh, you know, I'm not sure that um, I'm not sure that the Department of Justice is done uh, with the real estate industry. Um, and so, depending on how um, di different brokerages, it states, regions, localities, uh, the national uh, organization, depending on how um, the settlement is implemented. Um, and you know, whether they, f they feel like, um, they've gotten to the point that they wanted to get to, um, with, um, with all of this stuff, um, we, we may see some more activity, I think, especially around, um, uh, uh, transactions where, uh, the listing agent is also trying to represent the buyer. Um, I think that's tricky. Uh, and, and I think that, I think there may if 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 there's an increase in the number of transactions where that's the case, um, I think we may see some more activity from the Department of Justice and and some of the lawyers that were involved in the original cases. Um, and um, you know, I think where where some of these um, buyer representation agreements have been more confusing. Um, at least according to some industry watchdogs and uh, and the Department of Justice, I think we may see some more activity there. Um, so um, I don't think we're out of the woods yet, um, but I, I think a lot depends on how um, how these different organizations and, and brokerages are responding to the terms of the settlement and whether the Department of Justice feels like we're we're doing a good job moving forward. I'm really happy to hear you say opportunity because that's exactly what we've said um, in a lot of our conversations as well is look at this as an opportunity to articulate your value. Look at this as an opportunity to level up. Yeah. So, so important. 
uh, again, I'm re- really glad you you mentioned that. The I, I think there will be a flight to quality here, and it, I, I think the the agents that are uh, professionals and provide trusted advice, um, and who you know this is a this is a full time job for um, I I think for the most part people will flock to those to those folks. Um, and it'll be more it'll be more challenging for for folks who approach this from a part-time perspective um, and you know maybe do one or two transactions a year. Um, so uh, yeah, I think that'll, that I, I expect the flight to quality will be will be something that we'll, we'll see in the next in the next year or two. And also, I love that you use the word trusted advisor. We just actually launched a consumer campaign focusing on the American dream of home ownership. And in it, we actually didn't even use the word realtor. We actually used the word trusted advisor and what it looks like to have a community surrounding you. Like for somebody moving, the example is like somebody moving from another country and, you know, they just want these four walls, the same safe space that all of us want, but they don't know who to turn to. And so it's about community and trusted advisors. And I think having the network of like loan originators, mortgage lenders who do become good friends and family. And then your realtor, I mean, they, these are the people that are helping you make the largest financial decision of your life and helping guide you in a way. Like I always want things to be done the right way. I'm like, I don't care how it gets there as long as it's done the right way. And so I think having these advisors is so key. And so everything that you said, I'm like, yes, yes, yes. I want to write all of it down. Yeah, I mean, I'm just, I think back to the transaction, real estate transactions that I've done uh, personally. And, um, it, uh, you know, I, I'm in, I'm in the business. Um, and a couple of years ago, uh, my wife and I so- sold an apartment in, in New York. Uh, we had never sold a, a home before. Right. <laughs> um, and, you know, it was in a co-op and had all sorts of uh, wrinkles along the way, like every most, most transact, most real estate transactions do. And our, uh, listing agent just, she knew what was up. She knew, right. she, she, she knew how to navigate each sticky situation. And, um, we ended up, you know, selling for, I, th- I think we were like 20 or 25% over, over asking, um, which was, it was tremendous for us. Like he did right. like hugely important for wealth building. Like, like you talked about, Um, and there's no way I could have navigated even, even being, you know, at a media company that covers the housing market, you know, knowing the intricacies of co-op law and, and, uh, and New York real estate, having somebody to navigate that with, who's a professional and has done it, uh, tens and hundreds of times, uh, over the past, you know, number of years, it's just, it's so helpful. It's really, really helpful. Uh, that's the same for me, even though I feel like I can, you know, what can do it all on my own. I definitely have always used a realtor because what if I have to negotiate something on an inspection report? I don't want to be in the middle of having to negotiate that. And at the end of the day, it's just, it's always worked out. Brandon, do you represent yourself or do you hire some, do you, do you hire an agent in your it's, office? <laughs> it, it's funny. I've always, I've always hired an, an agent uh, to take care of it, partially because when I'm selling a home, I don't like to be on the phone with the agent scheduling appointments. And so it takes it takes the personal side out of it. And and you have somebody else that's not emotionally attached to the transaction being to help you through it. And uh, so, yeah, I always do. And now, luckily, uh, my son's a realtor, so that makes it a little easier to refer it. <laughs> He's a fantastic. So. He's fantastic also. So I mean, um, I I too I too agree with you um, that I think there's going to be a flight to quality. And the uh, this the settlement has the potential to make our industry a lot better, more professional and stuff. But what other uh, pull out your crystal ball and, and what other kinds of things in the future outlook? Uh, what are your predictions for the housing market over the next five years, and and how should professionals maybe prepare for these changes? Five years is 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 tricky. Just thinking about. How much has happened in in my five year or six years at at, at Housing Wire, um, but I, I think that there are a couple of of trends that um, that won't be consistent, right? Uh, and that won't go away over the next couple of years. One is there is a huge demographic patch of 
of of millennials and now Gen Gen Z um, who want to buy homes, mm-hmm. um, and uh, and so there's a lot of uh, potential customers who are uh, getting to home buying age, who are starting families and want to move out of that rental and and, and buy their first home. So I think the number of first-time home buyers and therefore customers uh, for realtors across the country is going to be consistent. Um, I think that demographic patch is going to last for many, many more years. Um, And especially because a lot of those folks had to defer their home buying dreams over the past couple of years just because there was no inventory, right? And home prices went up too much. Uh, And so I think over the next couple of years, as we see mortgage rates moderate a little bit and we see more inventory of homes available for sale, I just, it's a huge opportunity. Uh, It's a really big opportunity with millennials and Gen Z um, to sell them their first home um, and to to get creative where needed to to get them into that home. So I think that's a big thing. I think that, um, you know, we see, we've, we've seen several players over the last couple of years, you know, like Zillow, like Open Door, who um, dip, dip their hands into other parts of the transaction. Um, like Zillow has actually become a decently sized mortgage business um, over the last year or two. Um, uh, uh, Open Door um, is still buying and selling a number of properties and doing the full transaction, right? Um, they're part, I think they're partnering with, uh, with real estate agents and realtors better and more effectively. I think that there's more opportunities for, for realtors to work with iBuyers like Open Door. But I don't think that that's going to slow down. I think that there will be companies that will continue to try to um, turn this into an end-to-end transaction uh, with with either the home seller or the home buyer. Um, But I I think what will ultimately win out in the end will continue to be like having two trusted advisors in in your transaction. You have your your, your realtor uh, and your loan originator. Um, and they're going to be tech enabled. And so they're going to be able to, uh, to serve more, more customers, uh, more home buyers and more home sellers, um, than, than ever before, um, because of that technology. Um, so like I, I'm bullish, I think there's a lot of opportunity. Um, and, um, and, uh, uh, and, and technology is only going to help. And I think for, a lot of the conversations that we have are centered around how do we move that tenant into being a first time home buyer and encouraging that. Cause obviously there's a place for tenants in, in everything, but like empowering them to know that they have the, you know, the, the ability to actually own their own home and maybe pay the same amount towards a mortgage that they would towards a rental. And so I think empowerment is, is, is great. And so do you guys report or have any conversations around how, how you empower that tenant to become a first time home buyer and kind of pathways? I think that um, the key, the key there is um, to have a a good um, understanding of the, the financing options that are out there. I, I think, most people uh, still think that uh, a twenty percent down payment is required to buy a home. We know that that's not the case. There are a lot of options out there. There's mortgage insurance. There's down payment assistance. Um, there's FHA loans. Um, there's VA loans for veterans. Um, there's loans coming out of the agriculture, Department of Agriculture, um, for that are available to certain folks. Um, so having a good understanding of um, of financing options, um, there you know there's non qualified mortgages you know where, where people you look at people's income uh, and, and debt coverage ratios. Um, having a basic understanding of these different options and having really good and trusted uh, mortgage uh, partners, <laughs> um, I think is really it's really really important for uh, for a realtor. Um, to to know these different ways that you can maneuver a first time home buyer into a home, and and to help them understand that you don't need that twenty percent down payment. Um, you don't have to wait for that. 
Um, and you know, what are the ways that that you can that you can get around that twenty percent down payment? I think the the realtors that understand that and have good partners who can execute on those different mortgage products, I, I think that's huge. Absolutely. So I think for those listening, if you are a tenant and you know, you've you've had the idea of owning your home one day. And again, like just even thinking about what Diego has said over the next year, two years, even how great 2025 might be as an opportunity, have those conversations, like take the time now to plan. Maybe it's a year or two away for you, but have those conversations now so you can see what options are available and like get on that plan and pathway um, to, to, the, to the best source of generational wealth, owning your own home. Absolutely. And, and, and there are um, thousands of loan originators across the country who will walk you through that process, who will help you understand the different financing options, help you look at your, your credit profile, your credit score and credit optimization opportunities, you know, the, th- the steps you can take over the next year, year and a half so that you're in a position to, to buy probably right when mortgage rates are going to be in a really good place. Do the planning now, right? I mean, it's like the steps you can take so that when the time comes, you've already gotten your credit to a certain point. And again, you have a trusted advisors that can help get you there. Brandon, do you have any final questions for Diego before we wrap things up? No, I appreciate his time. I mean, I've, I've gotten a lot out of this podcast. And uh, I could probably talk to you for another couple hours, but but yeah, thank you so much. Yeah, you're incredible. If you have one piece of takeaway advice for our listeners, what would that be? It can be on anything from what kind of food they should order for dinner. Well, I, I love Italian food, so um, uh, pizza. That- yeah, definitely some pasta is always good. Pizza, pizza or pasta. My one takeaway is um, we have a lot of valuable information uh, available on housingware.com. And we distribute that information through a number of different channels. So if, if you prefer uh, listening to, to reading, you know, we've got some great podcasts that you can find on housingware.com. Uh, you know, if you want to get involved in some of our live events, we do virtual events. It's it's all available there. And if you want to really dive into the data, you can also subscribe to to HW Plus, which is our uh, subscription, um, or to Altos Research, which again provides uh, real time housing market data in every zip code across the country. Uh, and you can find all that stuff just going to HousingWire.com. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to join us today. And we look forward to many more continuing conversations. And as you said, we're in this together. You know, we're here to make each other better. I think that everything that that you guys are working on and towards is just going to help our industry and help our agents be better equipped um, on servicing their clients and um, making sure that the consumer is protected. Thank you so much for your time, Diego. I appreciate you. Thanks so much.